That's a tough act to follow. Hi. Is that a Kansan? Who are you? Oh, she loves my wife. I get this a lot, you know. I want you to know. It's okay. So I'm in a happy mood. You're all in a happy mood. It's a great day, and I loved hearing the president. Did you love hearing from the president and the vice president? I got to fly down on Air Force Two, which is pretty cool, I want you to know. That was pretty awesome. Uh, Mike Pence and I were trying to compare hairdos, and we think it's pretty similar. <laughs> so sadly, over the last decade, we've seen the increased radicalization in our country. We see it all around us. We see it in our major foundations. You heard of a guy named Michael Bloomberg? We've seen it. We see it in our universities, not just the private ones on the East Coast, but now we're seeing it, the radicalism in our state universities all across the land. We see these left coast, left wing billionaires, tech billionaires, gobbling up media companies and trying to have a big influential voice in the swamp. And now, I guess it's the Boy Scouts' turn. I guess it's not the Boy Scouts, I guess I mean the unisex scouts. <laughs> the postmodern scouts, where, where they're gonna sing around a cozy safe space in their new uniforms. A onesie. <laughs> I think we've lost too many institutions. At some point, we just have to say no more. And you know, this left-wing cabal, they love to diss the Constitution, except for the First Amendment, because they believe that the First Amendment was written to protect, to protect media companies. That's what the First Amendment is all about. You have journalists lecturing the rest of us that the Constitution is all about their ability to report the news as they want to report it. Well, what do they forget? The First Amendment has some things before that. How about our ability to speak out? How about our ability to kneel before our God and Savior and follow his commands, even, then, even when we feel alone? Because we know when we feel alone and isolated, sometimes we hear his voice even more loudly. And you've heard, as Chris told you, they had a little dinner party in the swamp the other night the White House Correspondents' Dinner, where they decided to bring in a no-name, potty mouth comic. I'm not gonna mention her name. And you know what? She has the constitutional right to be as foul-mouthed as she wants to be. But here's what they forget. You know what right we have? And my wife and I exercise this right. We have the right to get up and walk out and say no more. You can turn off the device. You can switch the channel. You can cancel a subscription. You are powerful, and your voice is protected in our Constitution. And the First Amendment, what's it protected by? The Second Amendment. We all know it. Mark just said it so eloquently. And you know what else we know in the Constitution? There's something called a separation of powers. And Ted Cruz is gonna be out here in a minute, and he's the smart lawyer, but let me tell you, I learned just enough in high school to learn what the separ separation of powers means, and you know what it means? The president can fire any political executive branch employee he wants. And he should exercise that right. I think the president was right to fire Jim Comey. We've lost enough institutions. We're not going to lose the leadership of the FBI to the political left. It's not going to happen. But I'm confused. I don't know what your point of view is. Do you agree with Jim Comey? Cheer. You agree with President Trump? Comey. President Trump. I think that case is closed. 
It's time to fight back. Conservatives and constitutionalists have seen enough of our rights slip away. And we understand that the government should be a limited government. And we're gonna fight for this conservative agenda that's being put forth by the White House and by strong conser conservatives in the House and the Senate. We're gonna fight if there's another Supreme Court opening. We're gonna fight to get these good judges uh, all up and down the bench. And let me tell you why. I mentioned my hair. I turned old this year officially. I turned 50. It's true. I know I look like I'm 65, but I'm only 50. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you something. For the last 40 years, we've never been in a better position to accomplish so much. Don't let them distract you when the goal is in sight. You name the issue, we're in the zone to get it done. You've watched the last 16 months. This can happen, but it will not happen if we get distracted and we allow them to tear us apart. We gotta stay together and we have to keep fighting. And I want you to know the American Conservative Union, a group I'm proud to chair, which gives you CPAC every year in the nation's capital, and we go all around the world. We've been to Jerusalem, we've been to Tokyo, we did 25 events fighting for our conservative values. We're really proud of the work we're doing at the American Conservative Union. Thank you. We're proud because our group is made up of fine Americans like yourself. But today, we're taking a step back uh, to bow in honor to the National Rifle Association, which, as you know, protects our constitutional rights and, of course, our civil rights. First of all, Wayne LaPierre, a lifetime of leadership to our constitutional values, a good man, a great leader, a fighter, and an ally. And to Chris Cox, who is just out here, and I hope is gonna walk out here again, who's a wonderful friend, a family man, a brilliant strategist, someone who fights for you every day in the corridors of your legislature. You have a great team leading the NRA. There they are. And because this is a big deal, in the almost 60-year history of the American Conservative Union, we have never had a Hall of Fame, and we decided that we would establish the first ever conservative Hall of Fame. And when we thought of all the people over 60 years, all the groups that, who we could honor by being our first inductee, we decided the right thing to do, Chris, was to give it to the National Rifle Association and all of you and to the great work of Wayne and Chris. so much I'm taking it back. <laughs> the National Rifle Association, for its extraordinary contributions to the cause of freedom, established in 1871, the National Rifle Association is America's longest standing civil rights organization. In vigorously defending the Second Amendment to the United States Constitution and the rights of all citizens to keep and bear arms, the NRA protects America's founding principles and works to ensure that the people of the United States of America can continue to govern themselves. Thank you very much.